Chapter 461, Strawberries Li Mangru was very well aware of the value of these small tomatoes, although her family was lucky enough to buy them once or twice, one box only had around two dozen, so only the children of the legitimate wife were given one to two tomatoes. As for the concubine-born children, even those who were more favored weren't necessarily given the opportunity to try any. She had never expected that the fruits that her older legitimate sister had talked about would actually show up next to her. Furthermore, it wasn't one or two tomatoes and was actually a whole fruit platter full of them. There were around a couple dozen on the plate. Try some. These were planted by me and my godmother and I think they taste better than the ones grown in the greenhouse pavilions. Yuxia Cow secretly watered these tomato plants with some mystic stone water every day, so it was obvious as to why they tasted better. Furthermore, eating these were also beneficial to the body. Li Mangru carefully used her hand to pick up one and glanced at Yuxia Cow as if she was trying to assess if it was truly okay for her to eat them. When she saw Yuxia Cow nod with a smile and also pick one up from the platter in front of her and deliver it to her mouth, Li Mengru finally cautiously placed the small tomato into her mouth. She lightly used her teeth to bite into it and slowly chewed. A fresh taste of sweetness with a hint of sourness traveled throughout her mouth. It was an unfamiliar flavor but a sense of happiness and contentment spread from her mouth and into her heart. No wonder her older legitimate sister couldn't forget the taste of these fruits. It wasn't just the flavor of these small tomatoes that conquered people's hearts. These tomatoes also gave people a sense of satisfaction. It was the kind of feeling that she only had when her concubine mother was still alive and could still take care of and protect her. She forcefully sucked on the sweet and sour juice within the cherry tomato, as if she was trying to preserve that feeling of happiness. Because she had been reminded of the good times she had with her concubine mother, Li Mengru's eyes started to shine with unshed tears while her face had a sweet smile on it. After she slowly finished the tomato in small bites, Li Mengru gently sniffled and used her handkerchief to dab at the corners of her eyes. She smiled and said, Forgive me, I was impolite earlier and let you see a joke. No need to be so polite. I'm the same as you. Whenever I eat something that I like I can get overwhelmed by my feelings. Although these small tomatoes are considered quite expensive and valuable by other people, in my residence, they're as common as cabbages and radishes. I'm not trying to brag, I just want you to feel more comfortable and eat as much as you wish. In order to soothe the other young maiden's heart, she made sure that her every expression and word showed how common these cherry tomatoes were to her. As expected, when Miss Lee heard her words, she let out a peal of laughter and said, if you said this on the streets of the capital, there will definitely be plenty of people who want to beat you up. These fruits are so rare that even those with goblets of money may not be able to get any, but in your eyes, they're as common as cabbages and radishes. Aren't you looking for a beating? Yuxia Cow casually shrugged her shoulders and waved a hand. Everything I say is true. If you don't believe me, then you can come visit my family's greenhouse to take a look. My godmother says I don't understand elegance since I'm using her greenhouse, which she uses to raise rare and valuable plants, to grow some fruits. Truly a waste of prime resources. Now that you mention it, I am now truly curious about your family's greenhouse. Li Mangru was still quite young and usually spent most of her time in her own courtyard. She didn't have many opportunities to interact with and chat with other young maidens her age. Yuxia Kao was very different from the other young ladies she knew, who always talked with deliberate politeness. Those maidens were only interested in the four arts and the womanly crafts. Yuxia Kao, on the other hand, was the exact opposite and it was very refreshing. The other girl was using an expensive greenhouse to grow fruits and vegetables, so she could see why Lady Fang would scold her daughter for being wasteful. Yuxia Cao also wasn't in a hurry to get to her reason for inviting the other girl. As long as she was able to let the other maiden let down her guard and see her as a friend, in the future, things would naturally go as they willed. She grinned and stood up. If Miss Lee doesn't disdain this, then you can come to the greenhouse with me. Other than tomatoes, 
I'm also growing some strawberries. This morning I took a peek and it looks like a few of them are pretty much ripe. We can go pick some and dry. Strawberries? She was even growing strawberries. A glitter of delight flashed through Lee Mengru's eyes. Her legitimate mother was considered quite generous and never shortened the allowances of the concubine-born children. In spring, Li Mengru loved eating the sweet and sour strawberries the most out of all the fruits. She never would have thought that there was someone who could grow strawberries in the middle of winter when the snow and winds blew fiercely. Her young maiden's heart immediately lightened and the curiosity within her also increased. The two young maidens put on their thick outer clothing and left the room that was warmed with a heated floor to step into the blustering snow. Yuxia Kao was in the front, leading the way while Li Mengru followed from behind. Before long. The two of them were in front of the greenhouse. Since Lady Fang loved Flora, General Fang had constructed a very large greenhouse for her in the corner of the back garden. It took up an area of at least 300 square meters. All four sides of the greenhouse were constructed of transparent glass and even the connecting roof at top was made entirely of expensive glass. This greenhouse alone must have cost at least a thousand dollars to construct. Li Mangru was quite flabbergasted at the site. When they entered the greenhouse, Li Mengru discovered that the flowers inside weren't left on the ground like she thought and instead were in pots that were stacked high on shelves. There were shelves on all four sides of the greenhouse. On the south side, there were two stacks and the rest of the sides had three stacks each. All of the shelves held a variety of valuable and rare plants and orchids made up the largest number. In the best position in the greenhouse was the orchid that had caught everyone's eye at the flower war banquet, elegant lotus crown. Furthermore, it wasn't only just one pot. Some of the flowers had been suspended from above in an effort to save space in the greenhouse to allow vegetables and fruits to be planted below. The ground in the greenhouse had been cleared. Half of it was used to plant tomatoes and the other half was used to grow strawberries. It was likely that most of the ripe fruits had been picked in the morning as the vast majority of tomatoes on the plants were still green in color. Occasionally, she could see a few that had some faint red coloring. As they walked by, Yuxia Cow casually picked a few remaining ripe tomatoes that had escaped the earlier harvest and passed them to Li Mengru as she said, in reality, the fruits that you pick yourself are usually the most sweet. Let's go, we should go further in to check the strawberry fields. The strawberry vines lay on the ground and some bright red fruits peeked out from within the vibrant green of the leaves. Li Mengru spotted a strawberry that was completely red and couldn't help but bend over to pick it. At this point, Dan Chun, who was by Yu Cao's side, picked up a water dipper from the corner of the greenhouse and walked over with a ladle full of water and smiled. Miss Lee, do you want to wash it? Li Mengru looked at the large and bright red strawberry in her hands that was wafting off a sweet fragrance. This strawberry was larger than any of the ones she had previously eaten and the smell it gave off was more dense too. She couldn't help but swallow down her saliva and then glance sheepishly at Yuxia Kao. Yuxia Kao didn't even notice the embarrassed look in the other girl's eyes. She stepped onto the slightly moist soil and walked into the strawberry fields. She bent down as she searched within the strawberry leaves and picked the ripe ones she came across. She washed the ones she picked in a dipper of water that was in Wu Tong's hands and happily ate them after they were washed. Li Mangru hesitated for a moment before she copied the other girl's movements. She placed the strawberry she had just picked into the water dipper to wash clean and then took a big bite from it. It was so sweet and fragrant. Li Mangru's eyes curved up in delight and finished the strawberry in another few bites. Then, she followed Xia Kao from behind and looked for new targets. The two maidens had their heads lowered as they continued to search for ripe strawberries. Although they didn't speak much, their hearts had unconsciously become a lot closer. By the time they left the greenhouse, Li Mengru was no longer as stiffly polite as before. Even though she still wasn't very talkative, the smile on her face had become much more sincere. The friendship between these two young maidens had started like this. While filling her stomach with a bunch of strawberries and small tomatoes, Li Mengru felt as if she was in a dream. She was in a comfortably warm greenhouse eating icy cool fruits that she had personally picked herself. It was truly a strange and eye-opening experience for her. By the time they got back to the receiving room, the kitchen had sent a few plates of delicate pastries to them. After asking, 
Li Mengru discovered that Yuxia Kao herself had come up with the recipes for all of these novel and beautiful desserts. A wave of admiration surged within her. It was no wonder that Xia Kao at such a young age was able to become the only female official in the great Ming dynasty. She truly had the talents to back it up. Li Mengru tried a piece from every pastry and was at the point that her belly bulged from eating. The two young maidens had become close friends after eating and drinking tea together in a harmonious manner. Older sister Mengru, I won't beat around the bush now and will just say it outright. This time I invited you over because I wanted to discuss with you about collaborating together in opening a store. Yuxia Ka stated her motives for inviting the other girl after drinking a sip of digestive tea. Collaborate in opening a store? Li Mangru replied in a very surprised tone and then immediately added sheepishly. I am only the daughter of a concubine and I don't have a lot of money on hand. If younger sister Xia Kao doesn't disdain this, then I can have Jaina take out all of my savings and bring it over to you. Jaina, who was standing by her side, had also been given a few pieces of pastries to eat. She was quite grateful that she had gone out today with her young miss. When she heard her young miss offer her life savings, she couldn't stop her lips from twitching a bit as she thought, young miss R, ah, you probably don't have more than tendrils saved up right now and the only reason you have that much is because it's winter right now and you can't buy your ingredients for your cosmetics. Official you has so many money making ventures in her hands, so how could she possibly lack your insignificant tendrils? As expected, Yuxia Kao chuckled gently, older sister Mengru, I want to open a cosmetics shop that targets women. I'm sure you've also heard of my residence's Beach Blossom Tea, right? Since it's a beautifying cosmetics store, it can't just rely on flower teas alone and needs some products targeting the outer skin. I heard that you're quite good and creative at coming up with new cosmetic products. Thus, I boldly invited you over. Are you saying that you want to sell the cosmetics that I make in this new store? Li Mengru's eyes were opened wide in disbelief as she asked in a flabbergasted manner. Yuxia Kao nodded her head and replied, Yes, not only you, but I also invited the daughter of the Prime Minister, older sister Yuan, to also collaborate with this venture and see if she wants to sell her products. Oh no, oh no. Li Mengru repeatedly waved her hand and said, those cosmetics are just some random things I made in my free time and they are nowhere near finished products. It's fine to take some out and play around but if I dare to sell them in your store, I'm afraid I might drag you down a bad road, younger sister. I absolutely cannot, older sister, is it necessary for you to be so humble? Even older sister Yuan, one of the two beauties of the capital praises the cosmetics you make without end. She also said that the products you make are even better than the cosmetics that are sold by full spring fragrance. The other noble maidens who have tried your products also have the same opinion. Older sister, do you still have any doubts now? But, no need for buts. People need to learn how to try before they know what they truly can or cannot accomplish. Back when the emperor titled me as a sixth ranked official and put me in charge of managing the imperial plantation, I was also feeling a bit uneasy. However, now, didn't the facts show that I am capable of doing this? Yuxia Kao knew that the other maiden wasn't necessarily without talent but more had an issue with confidence. Thus, she tried to bolster the other girl. Chapter 462 demonic side, Li Mangru was already quite tempted. Although she had a timid personality, she also wanted to show that she wasn't a complete failure. Yuxia Kao was younger than her by two to three years and was already so bold and courageous. Why couldn't she also try to be more like the other little girl? Then if you're not afraid I'll ruin your store, then I'm willing to collaborate with you in opening this new business. Opportunities in life didn't appear all the time. Li Mengru gritted her teeth and made her first daring decision in her entire life. Years later, the outcome would show that the step she took today was very worth it. She had now convinced Li Mengru. In addition, she had already obtained the consent of older sister Yuan during her last visit with the other noble maiden. The daughter of the prime minister was quite intrigued by this beauty and cosmetics business and also agreed to work with her. With this, they were already halfway there to opening the beauty and cosmetics business. I'm planning on making our business into a special place for women to relax and beautify themselves. Other than selling some floral and herbal teas, we can also sell nourishing tisanes, 
cosmetics and other beautifying skin products. Furthermore, we can offer services to improve a woman's face and appearance. For example, we can have facial consultations, shoulder and neck messages, traditional medicine consultations and pedicures. Furthermore, we can also organize parts of the boutique such that the customers can admire flowers, taste tea, eat pastries, play cards, and play mahjong. Also, we will only allow female customers in the store so this will be a boutique that is solely for the purpose to help women take care of themselves. Yuxia Kao described a wide scope that she wanted to try to combine so that Lee Mangru would have more confidence in becoming a collaborator. Lee Mangru's eyes started to glitter with excitement and a look of longing crossed her face. She murmured, originally, I thought that this was only going to be a store that sold cosmetics. But from what you're saying, even I want to come and try out the services. Don't worry ah. Uh. Once the beautifying facility has finished construction, you, I, and older sister Yuan will all have our own special small courtyards in the building. Each mini courtyard will have a perfect set of facilities, so you can experience any procedure that you want. Furthermore, it'll be free for you and any of your next of kin. Each of us will also be given three diamond cards that allow people to get 50% off, so you can give them to your good friends. Wow, that good, huh? But isn't that a bit too generous? Would our boutique not be able to cover our expenditures if we give out such good benefits? Li Mangru was a bit hesitant at this. She had around six to seven sisters in her family, although some had already married. They were still considered next of kin, right? If her sisters also brought other people along, would they be charging those people or not? Yuxia Kao grinned, we can make the rules very clear. Only next of kin gets services for free. The people they bring along will at most get 10% off, so it still gives them some face. Everyone is a well-bred lady in the capital and no one will dare to risk their personal reputation for the sake of getting a bit of personal benefits. We don't need to worry about this. That being said, I have all the power in this scenario. If they want to enter, then they need to follow my rules. Otherwise, if they don't, then they can enter the blacklist for all of my other enterprises. I'm sure that no one will be so stupid to try to do that. When she heard the word blacklist, Li Mengru recalled what had happened to Assistant Minister Li's entire family. It was said that they had already eaten only radishes and cabbages for the past half month. Although they didn't have to skimp on meat, they couldn't only eat meat containing dishes all the time, right? Even she, as an unfavored concubine born daughter, still had a plate of fresh and green vegetables at every meal. Assistant Minister Lee's family was so pathetic now. However, who allowed their daughter to offend younger sister Xia Kao so much? Younger sister Xia Kao was so friendly and adorable, yet Lee Mairu unexpectedly hated her guts and even deliberately provoked her. The consequences were clear now. Lee Mairu only brought disaster on her own family and they were now the laughing stock of the capital. All right. Let's discuss the divisioning of profits now. I've already drafted up a contract. I'll be in charge of obtaining the location, staff, materials, as well as bringing everything into operation and the marketing. You and older sister Yuan will only need to train a few maid servants such that they can make your special rouge, face powder, and duck egg powder. Both of you will get 20%, while I get 60%. How do you feel about that? Yuxi account took out a contract that had that all written out and gave it to Li Mengru to allow her to inspect it carefully. Yuxi Kao had just said that this beauty boutique spa was going to sell skincare products, cosmetics, cosmeceuticals, and beautifying procedures. Her rouge and face powder was only a small part of the business. Even if she didn't collaborate, Xia Kao could easily make a business deal with Full Spring Fragrance instead. She felt a bit guilty taking 20% of the profits. In actuality, I could just take a tenth of the profits instead. Li Mengru was very satisfied with the contents of the contract. If things went all, even though it was only 20%, it was still likely going to be a large sum of money. She felt a bit lacking in confidence taking such a generous share. Young Miss Her Maid Servant, Jaina quietly prompted her. Was there anyone else in this world who would push away offered money? Her young miss was not very favored by her family. Other than some spending money, she never got rewarded with anything else. Furthermore, 
Her entire allowance was pretty much spent on the ingredients to make her special blush and face powder. Her young miss was almost 15 and needed to start thinking for herself. Although Lady Lee wouldn't stint on the young miss's dowry to embarrass her, she was still a daughter of the concubine at the end of the day. The young miss wasn't very close to the madam usually so it was unlikely that her dowry would be filled with valuable items. A dowry determined a woman's status in her husband's family. Naturally, the more one had the better. Miss Yu was kind and honest and was offering to give 20% of the profits to her young miss. Who would have thought that her young miss was so silly that she would negotiate to have a smaller share? Sai following such an innocent and naive mistress made her worry to bits sometimes. Yuxia Kao smiled faintly and shot a glance at the worried maid servant before she said, 20% is what I negotiated with older sister Yuan. If you have problems, then I can also invite older sister Yuan over next time and you can discuss with her. No, no. 20% is also very good. There's no need to bother Miss Yuan about this. The legitimate daughter of the Prime Minister was also known as the one of the two famed beauties in the capital. Compared to herself, who was merely the concubine-born daughter of an official in the Ministry of Ceremonies, Miss Yuan was the heavens to her ground. To her, Yuan Xuei Yin was someone she could look up to. Even her older legitimate sister wouldn't necessarily have the status to chat easily with Miss Yuan. How could she dare to question Miss Yuan's decision on something? Since you have no objections, then you can sign this contract. Yuxia Kao felt like she was the big bad wolf who was trying to abduct Little Red Riding Hood. She had Wu Tong grind the ink and then handed the brush over to Li Mengru. Li Mengru signed the contract in a woozy manner. The contract that described her 20% share of the profits was now finally done. Jaina carefully placed Li Mengru's finished contract into her embroidered pouch and planned on immediately placing the precious agreement into her young Mrs. personal box when they got back to the residence. At this time, Ying Chun lifted the curtain and stepped inside. She used a crisp and clear voice to announce, Young Miss, Royal Prince Yang has paid a visit. I have a guest over, so go tell Zuzi to bring him to the study in the outer courtyard and serve him some tea and light refreshments. When I'm done here, then I'll receive him. Yuxia Kao glanced at the color of the sky outside. That fellow must have rushed over as soon as court let out. The smile on her face unconsciously deepened a bit. After Ying Chun left with her orders, Yuxia Kao turned around and discovered that Li Mengru's face had suddenly turned so white that it was a bit scary. Yuxia Kao's eyes filled with concern and she couldn't help but ask. Older sister Mengru, are you not feeling right? I know a bit of medicine, how about I take a look for you? Li Mengru forced the corners of her lips up and revealed a smile that was more ugly than a sob. Her voice shuddered as she replied, I am alright. After she finished replying, she picked up her teacup and suddenly drank a large gulp that almost ended up choking her. Yuxia Kao gave her a nod glance. The other maiden was perfectly fine earlier. So what caused her to suddenly act like this? From the way she looked, she resembled a little roe deer who had been frightened to death. Her eyes flickered and Juxia Kao finally revealed an expression full of doubt as she decided to try to ask, Older sister Mengru, are you afraid of Royal Prince Yang? Li Mengru hesitated for a moment and then slightly nodded her head. She spoke in a quiet voice. I heard that Royal Prince Yang looks as crude as a bear and his face is as black as the bottom of a pot. His eyes are as large as copper gongs and his voice sounds like thunder. One slap from him is able to kill a startled horse on the scene. One kick from him can cause a man to spit up blood and die instantly. Just a single glare from him is enough to cause a person's blood to flow backwards. He's temperamental and moody to a fault. He can be fine for one second and then the next second he'll flip out. In a rage, he could rip a person in two. PFFFFTTT. Yuxia Kao couldn't hold back her mirth when she heard the other girl's descriptions. She gurgled incessantly with laughter as she held her belly. Apparently, in the eyes of these young maidens who rarely stepped outside, Royal Prince Yang had such a bad reputation that he resembled the black bear demon in the journey to the west. He could even rip a person in two. This was truly the same ability that those demons in the mythical stories had in her past life. That was too funny. When she saw Zhejun Yang later, she needed to make fun of him. Why are you laughing? I'm not done talking. Li Mengru opened her eyes wide as if she wasn't as scared anymore. However, 
she still used a quiet voice to remind you Xiaokao, younger sister Xiaokao, you must be very, very careful when you're interacting with Royal Prince Yang, you're so tiny so it'd be easy for him to eliminate you with one finger, you absolutely must go with what he says and don't offend him, young Miss China noticed that her young miss was becoming more and more ridiculous with every word she said, she stealthily pulled at Li Mengrun's sleeve to remind her to say less, this wasn't the first time that miss you had met with Royal Prince Yang, it was obvious that their relationship was quite good as Royal Prince Yang protected her fiercely and was willing to punish assistant minister Li's family for her, if you keep saying such things behind royal prince Yang's back to miss you, is it really alright, however, Li Mengru threw off her maid's hand and continued, younger sister Xiaokao, you absolutely need to believe this, did you know that royal prince Yang's reputation is used to scare little children, when my fifth younger brother was being very naughty, my legitimate mother scared him by saying, if you refuse to behave, then I'll send you to Royal Prince Yang. This saying is known throughout the capital and everyone uses it. Pfffttt. Wahahahaha, I can't take it anymore my tummy is about to burst from laughing too much. Wu Tong, quickly give me a belly rub. I laughed so hard that I'm bloated. Yuxiakao laid on the table and continuously pounded the table in mirth. She was laughing so hard that tears were streaming down her face. Wu Tong and Tan Shan stifled their smiles. One maid started rubbing their master's belly while the other poured a cup of hot tea to serve to her. Apparently, in other people's eyes, that handsome and good-tempered royal prince Yang had a demonic side to him. The nicknames the cold-faced death god, grim demon king and the Calamitous Star were probably all given to him because of these false rumors, right? How could these two maids know that if the prince hadn't met their young miss, then, other than his looks, he might be exactly like the man described in those rumors that Li Mengru mentioned, that prince would have been tormented by his inner demon and would have started to kill people willy-nilly, causing rivers of blood to flow, as time passed, he would become a blood-seeking demon and the court would need to take out their entire army including Su Ran and the hidden bodyguards he commanded, to subdue him once and for all. Chapter 463, Follow Up Seeing that Yuxiakao had other guests, Li Mengru decided to leave now. She repeatedly reminded the other girl to be careful around Royal Prince Yang. Yuxiakao held back her laughter and easily promised the other maiden. She personally escorted Lin Mengru out of the drooping flower gate. Suddenly, Xiaokao's second rank maid servant, Ying Chun, walked by with the elegant and handsome as a god royal prince Yang. When she saw everyone, Ying Chun bent over and gave a greeting, young miss, this servant is taking royal prince Yang to go see the mistress. Royal prince Yang, Li Mengru had kept her head lowered down carefully when she heard that there was an outside man coming in. Her heart was filled with equal parts of apprehension and curiosity. She couldn't help but stealthily raise her head slightly to look at the dark, shadowy figure who was behind Ying Chun. Unexpectedly, her eyes met a pair of cold and piercingly fierce eyes. It frightened her so much that her heart stopped for two beats. She quickly lowered her head to her chest as if she was a scared little rabbit. So scary. Sure enough, the rumors were not wrong. Royal Prince Yang's gaze was as sharp as a knife and almost frightened her to death. Although she didn't have the time to clearly see the other person's external appearance, her mind automatically filled in the gaps to form a picture, a very tall figure that resembled an iron tower. Author's note. The prince is wearing a black cloak, okay? And a piercing gaze that could kill a person instantly. Incredibly dreadful. Would younger sister Xiaokao be bullied by this man later on? Zijun Yang could sense someone feeling very apprehensive and was concerned that someone was trying to scheme against his little lass. He opened up his mind to his power and unexpectedly heard Li Mengrun's train of thoughts. He didn't know whether he should laugh or cry at this new information. This young maiden, whose courage was smaller than a bunny's, had actually described him in such a fearsome manner and was even worried that he would harm Xiaokao. She was thinking too much, okay? He constantly thought about how to protect her better. How could he bear to harm a single hair on his lass's head? When that maid came to get him, who did she say was meeting Xiaokao? The concubine-born daughter of a high-ranking official in the Ministry of Ceremonies. She dared to ruin his great and mighty reputation in front of his lass. Should he give her a lesson? Forget it. Since his lass was treating that young maiden quite well, 
he would let her go this one time. His little lass wouldn't be as timid as that girl. At most, he would likely be laughed at and teased by her. In any case, it wasn't the first time this happened, so he was indifferent to it. As long as his lass was happy, that was what mattered. Zijun Yang raised an eyebrow when he met the gleeful look in Yuxia Kao's eyes. His lips slightly curved up and he gave her a look that said, this prince will be waiting for you. Then, he left as if nothing had happened in that brief encounter. Li Mengru, who had been scared speechless, clenched tightly onto her handkerchief and kept her head lowered as much as possible. Her legs were tightened in fear. Only after Royal Prince Yang's figure completely disappeared did she finally let out a long sigh of relief. She felt as if she had just taken a stroll next to the gates of hell. Until she entered her carriage, Li Mengru still had some lingering sense of apprehension. Jaina, who was holding the gifted box, also patted her chest in relief and slowly let out a sigh as she softly said, Young miss, earlier Royal Prince Yang was too scary. I could feel the air freeze when I was only three steps away from him. This servant was so scared that I didn't dare to breathe. Oh right, young miss, did you get a good look at what Royal Prince Yang looks like? When I raised my head, I was so frightened by the sharp look in his eyes that I immediately lowered it again. I only saw that he was wearing all black and that he is very tall. Jaina, since Royal Prince Yang is so scary, do you think younger sister Xiaokao will be bullied by him? Li Mangru was sincerely worried about the young maiden she had just gotten familiar with. Jaina replied hesitantly, I don't think so, right? With Lady Fang there, she wouldn't let her daughter get pushed over. Furthermore from what Miss Yu was showing, it's unlikely that she's very scared of Royal Prince Yang. Perhaps, those rumors are all exaggerations. That being said, Royal Prince Yang can't just get angry for no reason at any time. Young miss, don't be so worried. When they returned to their residence, the two of them were immediately escorted to the central courtyard where the legitimate wife lived by a maidservant who was waiting for them at the inner gate. Li Mengru's legitimate mother, old illegitimate sister, and a few of her young illegitimate brothers were all waiting in the reception hall. The sight somewhat resembled a joint hearing. Li Meng appeared a bit wilted when she saw this and gave the proper greeting as she softly said, Li Meng greets mother. Lady Li had a sweet smile on her face as she waved a hand to summon this concubine-born daughter of hers who normally wasn't very eye-catching. When Li Meng arrived next to her, Lady Li gently said, there's no one that's an outsider here, so there's no need to be so stiff. Quickly sit down and drink a cup of hot tea to warm yourself up. Li Mangru couldn't refuse an offer from the older generation, so she sat down on a small embroidered stool next to the chaise lounge in a reserved manner. She clasped a cup of tea in her hands and slowly drank it in small sips. The flavor of this tea was quite inferior to the tea at younger sister Xiaokao's place. Her old illegitimate sister, Li Mengkai, didn't wait before she finished her cup of tea before she impatiently came over and asked, Younger sister, did official you invite you over for some matter? Did she receive you with a platter of fruits? Li Mangru handed the teacup over to Jaina, who was standing next to her and gently replied, Official you wants to cooperate with me as my ability to make cosmetics caught her eye. She wants to open a store together. Besides me, she also invited older sister Yuan from the Prime Minister's residence to also work on this business. Older sister Yuan's handcrafted duck egg powder is very famous throughout the capital. I would have never expected that younger sister's dabblings in mixing cosmetics could also catch official Yu's attention. Yuan's way and had a cold and indifferent personality. Ordinarily, she only interacted with those who were close to her like kindred spirits. There were no more than ten people in the capital who had entered her circle of friends. When she saw that her concubine-born younger sister had the opportunity to interact with the legitimate daughter of the Prime Minister in a business collaboration, Li Meng Kai's voice became soured with a hint of jealousy. Lady Li shot a faint glance of warning at her short-sighted daughter and smiled before she took over the conversation. Mengru, were you able to get along with Miss Yu? How's her temperament? Is she as crafty and tricky as rumored? You are one of the daughters of our residence, so there's no need for you to cater to other people and wrong yourself. When she heard that her legitimate mother seemed to be defending her, the innocent and naively Mengru felt her heart warm. She replied in a moved manner, 
Thank you, mother, for thinking of me. Younger sister Xiaokao is not as tricky and crafty as the rumors say. In fact, she's the exact opposite. She has a very sweet personality and treats people with respect and courtesy. There wasn't a hint of disdain in her demeanor when she talked with me. Even though I am the daughter of a concubine, she not only took out good tea and refreshments but also presented a fruit platter of small tomatoes to me. A whole plate of precious and valuable small tomatoes was taken out to receive a concubine-born daughter. As a guest, Lady Lee's two underage sons revealed envious, jealous, and somewhat hateful expressions. Lee Homing, who was seven, pouted and grumbled, I've only eaten cherry tomatoes twice thus far and every time I've only gotten three at most. Older sister who was actually able to monopolize a plate of them. It makes people feel very jealous. Minga. Lady Lee rebuked as she glared at her younger son and said, Nobleman must be upright and elegant. How can they only desire good food? Be careful to not let your father hear you. Otherwise, he'll punish you by making you copy books. Li Meng Kai loved her younger brother dearly and hurriedly changed the topic, only official you could bear to use a plate of small tomatoes to receive guests. With her connections with Royal Prince Yang, her supply of fruits from the greenhouse pavilions will always be strong. Li Meng lightly laughed and said, Older sister, you're wrong in this case. The small tomatoes that were used to receive guests at the Fang residence weren't grown in the greenhouse pavilions. Instead, they are grown in their own greenhouse at home. Her family's greenhouse has been split into several levels. The precious and rare flowers are all arranged on shelves or hung in the air. The entire ground has been used to grow tomatoes and strawberries. Not every family could afford to build a greenhouse in their own residences as it easily cost over a thousand dollars to craft one. It was a large amount of money for an estate like the official from the Ministry of Ceremonies. Lady Lee also wasn't someone who loved flowers as much as the flower fanatics so she naturally wouldn't bear to spend that large amount to build a greenhouse. Li Meng Kai remarked enviously, naturally it's more convenient to eat these fruits if you plant your own R. Uh, official Yu is talented at this so I'm sure the tomatoes she plants at home taste even better than the ones on the market. Older sister, did you finish an entire plate of cherry tomatoes? Li Homing was still obsessed over the fact that a concubine born older sister of his was able to monopolize a whole plate of cherry tomatoes. Li Mangru lowered her head and chuckled, how could I? After all, I was there as her guest, so I needed to show a bit of restraint. I only ate a few of the small tomatoes on the plate. However, when I was in the greenhouse, I ate quite a few tomatoes that I had picked myself. Li Heo, who had been silent this entire time finally opened his mouth when he heard this, official you also invited older sister Ru to pick tomatoes in the greenhouse, are the tomatoes you pick yourself more tasty, I heard that, on royal prince yang's farmstead, they have opened a business allowing guests to personally pick their own fruits, the entrance fee alone is a hundred dollars but you can eat as much as you want while you are in the greenhouse, however, if you want to bring any of the fruits home that you picked, you need to pay more money. There are no restrictions on the amount of watermelons or cantaloupes by weight but every person can only buy at most five catties of the small tomatoes. Every person can buy five catties of tomatoes? Then doesn't that mean that if we want to eat small tomatoes we can directly go to the farmstead instead of waiting in the wind and snow to buy it at the fruit stands? Li Meng Kai's eyes lit up as she started to consider begging her father on some day to bring them to Royal Prince Yang's farmstead to open their horizons. Li Heo gave her a look and continued, If you want to enter the greenhouse, every person needs to pay a hundred tls each as an entrance fee. Furthermore, the prices of the fruits at the farmstead are much higher than the prices set at the fruit stands. This type of expense isn't something that every family can afford to do. One visit there for one person would cost at least a hundred or so tals. With her father's official salary and her mother's income from her dowry shops, if their whole family went once, it was likely that they would have financial difficulties for the next few months. Li Meng Kai wilted down and slumped her shoulders. Li Meng Ru noticed that her older legitimate sister and two legitimate younger brothers all seemed to be somewhat downcast. She hurriedly looked back at Jaina and said, Mother, younger sister Xia Kao said that we got along well, 
So she not only treated me very well but also gave me a present to bring back. Jaina was a bit unwilling to take out the small tomatoes and strawberries that Miss Yu had given her young miss. Usually, when the family was lucky enough to buy some tomatoes, she never saw the madam or the eldest young miss thinking of her young miss. Why was young miss being generous in light of her own poverty? Although her heart was reluctant, Jaina didn't dare to reveal a single thought. She took out the two small and exquisite wicker baskets. The baskets had lids on them that prevented any of the people in the reception hall from seeing their contents. Lee Homing was very curious about this and stretched his neck forward in anticipation to see the present that official you gave. Lady Lee revealed a happy expression on her face and said, Miss Yu is truly too polite. Li Mengru placed the two small baskets on the small table in front of the lounge and then took off the covers, revealing the bright red small tomatoes and plump strawberries. Wow! A basket full of tomatoes. It must weigh around two catties ah? Official Yu is really generous. Li Homing exclaimed in pleasure. There are strawberries available in this season. No wonder the rumors all say that official you can disregard the seasons and grow any fruit or vegetables at any time of the year. Li Heo was also very surprised by this. Lady Li stared at the sweet and attractive strawberries and small tomatoes while her heart made a few fast calculations. Hereafter, she needed to treat this concubine-born daughter better. Perhaps through her they would be able to make a connection with Miss You. Chapter 464, The Kitten and the Dog The family looked at the bright red fruits on the table and, for a second, the whole entire room was silent. Even the youngest, Lee Homing, didn't start clamoring to eat the tomatoes. At this time, official Lee from the Ministry of Ceremonies walked in. He revealed a perplexed expression as it was currently lunchtime but there were no food dishes on the table. When he noticed the small tomatoes and strawberries on the table, official Lee's expression lightened and he smiled. Looks like our luck was pretty good today and we were able to buy such rare fruits. What a coincidence. Tomorrow I'm inviting a few of my colleagues over. I can use such valuable fruits to serve them then. Unexpectedly, his youngest son, Lee Homing, pouted unhappily when he heard this. Father, these fruits weren't bought by the servants from the kitchens. Fifth older sister had gone to official Yu's residence as a guest today and these are her gifts. After he finished, he stared pitifully at his father and the expression on his face clearly said, these fruits are considered to be the property of fifth older sister. Father, you don't even say a greeting before taking them over, is it really right? Brewer. Official Lee stared at his normally silent and taciturn concubine-born daughter with a flabbergasted expression. He would have never expected that she would catch the eye of Miss Yu and even be able to get some gifts from the other person. After his daughter explained what had happened, he was silent for a moment before he stated, Our ancestral background, if we go back three generations, is also from a farming family. We cannot use our backgrounds to humiliate other people. Assistant Minister Lee's family is a great example of what could go wrong, so you must keep this in mind. This Miss Yu is very young but has already shown such talent at farming and agriculture. In the future, the Emperor will clearly view her with great importance. Since Rua has caught her eye, then collaborate well with her. Do not use your background and talents to bully the other person. I will listen and obey father's instructions. Li Mengru seldom had the chance to talk to her own father, let alone receive any personal teachings from him. She was quite moved by this change. Li Meng Kai grinned, Father, you don't know what type of personality younger sister has. If she was an arrogant and willful person, even if she had talent, Miss Yu might still not decide to work with her. Earlier when this daughter attended a banquet to admire the plum blossoms, I heard a rumor that Miss Yu is planning on opening a flower tea store and to sell her peach blossom tea that is able to improve a person's appearance. Even without younger sister's rouge and face powder, she wouldn't lack for business. Official Lee muttered to himself for a bit before he finally said, You're normally just messing around when you make your rouge and face powder so there's usually not a whole lot when you're done. It'd be hard to manufacture enough with your current process. How about this, have your mother take some money from the residence's budget and give it to you. If you need any particular materials, please tell your mother. Before the shop opens, you need to practice more in order to avoid ruining Miss Yu's business venture. Yes, thank you, father. 
Li Mengru's normally reserved expression revealed hints of happiness, if she had access to top-notch ingredients, she was sure that she would be able to make cosmetics that were much better than the ones sold by full spring fragrance. When he saw how obedient and sweet his daughter was, official Li felt his heart relax a few fractions. He looked at his sons and daughters in the room and felt a bit of pride rise up, his children were all so obedient and understanding so they definitely wouldn't do anything like assistant minister Lee's daughter to bring calamity to their whole family. His oldest son was only ten this year but he had already read through and knew the book of songs and the book of history. 1. In the future, he naturally was going to become an official. His younger son was lively and clever. Although his personality was not as steady as his oldest son, he wasn't a stupid child either. His wife was virtuous and generous. People always said, a virtuous wife will reduce harm to her husband, and this ancient saying wasn't wrong. Wasn't assistant minister Lee's wife short-sighted and lacking in knowledge? After all, she had spoiled their daughter to the heavens, which caused them now to be the laughing stock of the whole capital. Um, official Lee looked at the valuable fruits on the table. There were even strawberries to be had in this season. Only Miss Yu's residence was able to bring out such rare fruits in this season so easily to give to other people right? He looked at Lee Mengru and then asked in a somewhat awkward manner, Rua, what do you plan on doing with these fruits? Although Lee Mengru had a weak and timid personality, she wasn't an imbecile. She hurriedly stated, whatever father decides is best. There are no outsiders here, so there's no need to be so cautious. In my heart, you, Kaya, Minga, and you are the same. You are all father's good children. Official Lee raised the status of this unassuming concubine born daughter of his to the level of his legitimate children. This showed how much importance he placed on the recent events. Lady Lee was very skilled at guessing her husband's intentions and hurriedly interjected. Rua lost her concubine mother when she was young and has always been a sensible and clever child. I quite pity her. Husband, how about we record Rua's name under me? In the future, she can also get a good marriage because of this. Then we will do as my wife says. Official Lee admired his wife's generosity and wisdom in this situation and now regarded her with even more importance. Lee Mengru almost couldn't believe her own ears. Being recorded under the legitimate wife's name was a very big honor for concubine born children. This meant that, in the future, she would be of the same status as her legitimate born older sister and younger brothers and would be considered a legitimate born child under the legitimate wife. She couldn't help but exclaim in happiness and repeatedly cried, Thank you mother for being so loving and generous. The smile on Li Meng Kai's face didn't change at all as she said, In the future, I will have a new legitimate younger sister. We're close in age so we should be more intimate together. Mother, the courtyard next to my Kinglin courtyard is still empty. How about we move younger sister Ru into that courtyard? That way. Us sisters can easily spend more time with each other. Okay. We will do as Kaya suggests. Lady Lee naturally wouldn't refuse to go with her daughter's wise decision. Only now did official Lee point at the two types of fruits on the table. Under the anxious gaze of his younger son, he proclaimed his decision. These two fruits are indeed very difficult to get. If I took them both, I would be ruining everyone's mood here. How about this? We'll leave half of each fruit here and use them at the end of our noon meal. Rua, from today going forward, you should stay in the main courtyard and take all of your meals with your mother. Before Li Mengru could reply, Li Homing already let out a scream of delight and had the servants bring a clean plate over. He personally divided the fruits by half and placed them on the plate. Li Mangru felt like she was in a dream today. First she had been invited by the famous official Yu and had signed a collaboration contract for a new business with her. Then, her father and mother started regarding her with importance and even, for some reason, elevated her status and made her a legitimate born daughter under her legitimate mother's name. While the main courtyard of official Lee from the Ministry of Ceremonies were happily enjoying their tomatoes and strawberries, at Count Zonkin's estate, General Fang's residence, Royal Prince Yang was currently holding a bright scarlet fox pelt in his hands and showing it to Yuxiakao. 
This type of red fox fur is very warm. Winter in the capital is different than in Tanga town as it tends to be very dry and cold. You should take it to make a long coat. You're always going back and forth between the capital and the imperial plantation. How could it be okay if you don't wear warm enough clothing? Lady Fang sat on the side with a smile on her face as she looked at the chests full of furs in the hall. Her satisfaction towards Royal Prince Yang had gone up a few fractions. Originally, when she discovered that Royal Prince Yang liked her 12-year-old daughter, she was quite opposed to this. Years ago, Royal Prince Yang's bad reputation had long spread throughout the capital. The rumors made him seem more vicious than a wild beast and he couldn't be easily controlled. Her daughter was weak and soft. If Royal Prince Yang exploded in temper, she would have no way to defend herself. She would rather find a more ordinary family for her daughter to marry into as long as the man was gentle and responsible than send such a weak lamb into the lion's den. However, after observing for some time, she discovered that while Royal Prince Yang may still treat other people with a cold and lofty manner, he was as gentle as a tamed colt with Xiaokao. Her normally clever and obedient daughter quarreled, contradicted ridiculed and even acted willful around the prince at times. It was as if she was a tiny naughty kitten using her claws to tease a gentle and honest large dog. That large dog could obviously eat the tiny kitten in one gulp but couldn't even bear to show his teeth to the small kitten when she dragged her claws over him. He was so good tempered that he allowed her to do whatever she pleased. Recently, Royal Prince Yang's bad reputation was not as horrible as it was in years past especially in these past two years. The prince hadn't lost control of himself and harmed anyone in recent times. It seemed like that wild beast within his heart had finally calmed down. The emperor also regarded him with increasing importance. Furthermore, every time he finished the tasks assigned to him, the emperor was always pleased with the outcome. Even if his tasks took him far away from the capital, royal prince Yang always thought of her daughter. For example, when he left to quell the rebellion in the north this time, he still remembered to buy Xiaokao tons of winter furs during the chaos of war. The room was currently filled with top-notch furs and even people with money to spend in the capital wouldn't be able to buy them. Because of this, Lady Fang's heart relaxed perceptively. When she came back to reality, Lady Fang could hear her daughter complaining. It's such a bright red color. Using it to make a scarf or hat is fine, but if it's used to make an entire long coat, won't I resemble a red packet at the end being clothed from head to toe in red? What's wrong with being clothed in red from head to toe? It's almost the New Year's and red is such a festive color, right? If you wear a long red coat, you'll resemble the good luck child in the New Year's pictures and everyone will find you adorable. Royal Prince Yang did his best to persuade the little lass from the side. Yuxiaka wasn't moved by his opinions. She frowned as she stared at the red fox pelt in her hands and shook her head. What type of aesthetic do you have? What do old men know about beauty? It's better to use this to make a nice cloak. I can line the edges of the cloak with some white fox fur. This is the biggest compromise that I'll make. K how can you speak to Royal Prince Yang in that way? He's giving you furs out of the kindness of his own heart. Lady Fang was afraid Royal Prince Yang would become unhappy and hurriedly pretended to scold her daughter. Zijun Yang noticed that Xiaokao was a bit upset as her lips were pouting and hastily interjected, No worries, this prince is already used to her mannerisms. If she treated me with complete politeness, then I would find it too weird. Lady Fang this chest of furs is for you and General Fang. You should go through it and see if there's anything else you want, okay? Oh ho, looked like he considered her an eyesore and was trying to send her off. Lady Fang was helpless at this and hid Ling Long stay in the room. Furthermore, before she left, she gave a few knowing looks to Xiaokao's other maid servants. With so many maids around, there was no way they could do something improper ah. After the older generation I saw left, Zijun Yang turned up his lady killer charm and gently stroked the little lass's head. The smile on his face was extremely gentle and the destructive power of his devilish looks came out in full force as he said, these two chests are all for you to pick through. Whatever you want to do with them is fine. This prince just got back from the battlefield and didn't come here to argue with you. You little lass, 
Why are you like a fighting chicken day in and day out? Is there anyone else besides me who can handle your little temper all the time? Yuxia Cow felt a bit embarrassed by his words. A few days ago, when she didn't have any news about him, she felt deeply concerned and worried all the time. It didn't matter how delicious the food she was eating, none of it seemed to have any flavor. Her face, which had originally plumped up under the care of her godmother, had returned to its usual slender and oval-shaped structure. Chapter 465, Only Because You're Too Gentle. But when she saw him, she could not resist bickering and bantering with him. Perhaps this was the spoiled from pampering that people always talked about. Sigh. Acting cute with a young handsome man who was not even twenty years old. The more she lived, the more she regressed. When she lifted her gaze, she was once again stunned by this young man's outstanding features. How could a person be so beautiful? He was so beautiful that his gender could be disregarded, that no one could ever hold a single blasphemous thought towards him, so beautiful others could not help but fall for him. PFFT, Zijun Yang saw that his little lass had gone into a daze while she stared at him. He had received quite a lot of infatuated stares like this in recent years, most of them from young girls in their teens but some also came from disgusting old men. He disliked all of them, all of them except for this little lass's gaze. Not only that, but he also even felt elated that she would look at him like that. Did this mean that the little lass was beginning to like him? After the New Year's. She would be 13 years old, and in certain tribes in the north, girls who reached the age of 13 were already eligible for marriage. Although, he was aware that it would be bad for both the girl's body and the future generation if the girl was to marry too early. If it were up to him, he still wished to marry her as early as possible. At most, they would only consummate the marriage after she turned 18. Since the little lass looked at himself like this, did it mean that she was not completely indifferent towards him? This new understanding was a big thing for him. It made him happier than even when he was rewarded by the emperor after winning a war and making a huge contribution to the great Ming Empire. Zijun Yang uncontrollably reached out his right hand and caressed the little maiden's soft cheek. He was addicted to this feeling, unwilling to part with it. If he could, he would hold the little lass's face as they stared at each other forever until the end of time. Ahem ahem. Ling Long had orders from the madam, so when she saw her young miss being taken advantage of by Royal Prince Yang, she hurriedly coughed loudly, reminding Royal Prince Yang to watch his actions. The madam had her eyes and ears around. Zijun Yang's brows furrowed in displeasure from being interrupted. His icy gaze slid over to Ling Long, coldly barking, If you're sick. Go see a physician. Don't stay here, lest you spread the disease to your mistress. Both Royal Prince Yang's expression and tone was saying, If you dare infect my little lass, you'd better fear for your life. Ling Long, who had been dutifully preventing her young miss from being snatched away by a large wolf, felt aggrieved after she was threatened, I'm not sick, I'm just reminding you to be more respectful. Royal Prince Yang. Is it really all right for you to dismiss us so justifiably after you've taken advantage of our young miss? Yuxia Kao scrutinized Ling Long but saw that she looked normal, so she said, Sister Ling Long's body should be fine. She's probably feeling uncomfortable in her throat because of the difference in temperature indoors and outdoors. I have some Chinese licorice root and Malva nuts in my courtyard. In a bit, we'll brew medicinal tea afterward. You'll be fine after drinking it for two days. Ling Long was even more aggrieved. Young miss, please don't listen to Royal Prince Yang. He's a sly, old fox. My throat is fine. Really? Maybe it was the psychological effect that, at this moment, she felt an itch in her throat. But she was afraid that her mistress would make her take some weird medicine, or that Royal Prince Yang would now have a reason to send her out, so she could only resist the urge to cough. It was uncomfortable to have an itchy feeling in her throat yet not being able to cough it out. She wanted nothing more than to reach into her throat and scratch at the itch. Once more. Zijun Yang glared at the maidservant who ruined the atmosphere. As he turned back around, he could not recover the previous feeling, so he could only point to another piece of pristine, white, 
Snow Fox Fur and said to Xiaokao, this kind of fur is the thickest. You should let the sewing department make a few coats so you can wear them interchangeably when you're out at the Imperial Plantation. It's the middle of winter and there's nothing really important at the farmsteads. You don't need to be so dutiful and travel to and fro the farmsteads when it's snowing. Yes, there's nothing that needs my attention at the winter wheat plantation, but it's our first year testing out the greenhouse pavilions. I still need to make my rounds occasionally. Isn't it snowing already? I'm afraid that the snow will ruin the greenhouse. It's only a minor problem if we don't make a profit, but it'll be terrible if we delay the supply of fruits and vegetables to the capital. Yuxia Kao would never admit it out loud that she was actually just afraid of affecting her profits. Zhejun Yang was well aware of his little lass's obsession with money but he did not reveal her true thoughts. If she said she was worried about the meals of the prestigious in the capital, then it was what she meant. Was that not what his soldiers said? If he wanted to make a girl happy, he would first have to agree that everything that she said was right, even if it was really outrageous and even if he disagreed. However, she wasn't wrong. It was easy to transition from rags to riches but hard to adapt from riches to rags. The esteemed and wealthy folks of the capital were already used to such luxuries. If their supply of fresh fruits and vegetables were suddenly cut off, they would no doubt be quick to voice their complaints. What happened to the horse carriage that I gave you? Why didn't you ride in that? The carriage is wide enough for you to put some braziers and warming sensors. Zhejun Yang's heart ached whenever he recalled the sight of that thin figure standing in the snow and wind. Now that he had mentioned about the horse carriage that he sent her, the edge of Yuxia Kao's lips could not help but twitch. That horse carriage was awarded to Royal Prince Yang by the Emperor. It was made to fit the status of a royal prince's personal carriage, but she was only a small sixth-ranked official. If she openly rode that horse carriage out to run her errands, the Emperor would definitely receive many complaints about her on his imperial desk the next day. Yuxia Kao told him about her thoughts. Zhejun Yang looked at her resignedly yet blummingly, inwardly grumbling, Won't you be rid of one more worry if you married me earlier? It seems that she won't be using my horse carriage, but I can't deny that I wasn't thorough in my considerations. At the time, I only wanted the best for her, but I hadn't considered the restrictions on her status. I'll need to have them quickly craft another comfortable horse carriage suited for her ank. Oh right. Was that young maiden just now your new friend? It should be so. It's been a while since you've arrived at the capital, yet you only go to the Imperial Plantation while staying cooped up at home for the rest of the time. You're a young lady, you should interact more with your peers, lest you become a little old lady. Although Zhejun Yang didn't really like Li Mengru's cowardly temperament, he agreed that friends who were simple-minded and harmless were still better suited for Xiaokao. Remembering a possible future source of income, Yuxia Kao grinned at him, Do you know which group of people spend the most money? It's children and women. Aren't there a lot of people in the capital who are envious of Godmother, who has fair and smooth skin, a great figure and looks younger than she actually is? I'm preparing to open a beauty salon that specifically provides services to women. As long as they're willing to spend the money, I'll make sure that they go out fair-skinned slim and beautiful even if they come in dark-skinned, plump and ugly. Seeing her confident expression, Zhejun Yang was a little worried that she would accidentally expose her intentions and affect her good name. At this time, he recalled the rumors that spread in the capital the time before the rebellion was put down, and he could no longer hold back his thirst for blood. You brought up a good daughter and married a good wife, right assistant minister of the Ministry of Appointments. Since you dare touch my person, you must be prepared to suffer the repercussions. The little lass was quite sensitive and seemed to have sensed the change in his emotions. Zhejun Yang met her questioning gaze and rubbed the top of her head, saying, Promise me, no matter what happens, don't face the dangers by yourself. If you have any difficult decisions to make, you must consult me first. Remember, even if the sky falls down, I'll hold it up for you. You're so hateful. You messed up my hair. She was touched. But Yuxia Kao pried off the outrageous hand on her head and bared her teeth at him in an attempt to hide it. Sai being pampered felt so good. In her previous life, her parents had passed away very early, so in order to bring up her young siblings, she forced herself to grow up, 
keeping all her sorrow and anger in her heart and bearing all the pressure and difficulties on her shoulders. At the very beginning, she was only a teenager, a freshman in high school. There was no one to share her despair with, so she could only withstand the pressure herself and drink her own tears. Now, there was a person who stood in front of her and told her, no matter what happens, I'll protect you. It would be a lie to say that she wasn't touched. She hadn't expected that ancient people would be so captivating. What's wrong? Though Zhejun Yang could not read Zhu Xiaokao's thoughts, his senses were still much more sensitive than ordinary people. He sensed that the little lass was feeling down all of a sudden and worriedly looked at her. Yu Xiaokao sniffled and grinned at him, her voice louder and clearer than before. Thank you, Zhejun Yang. Thank you for liking me an ordinary person who couldn't be more common. Thank you, for your unconditional support and trust in me. Thank you for being willing to wait for me. If your intentions are still the same when I reach the age of 16, let's get engaged. Ling Long panicked when she heard her young miss so casually promise her hand in marriage. My dear young miss, shouldn't your marriage be decided by your parents? You're only so young. Yet you've already promised your hand in marriage to the royal prince. Have you considered Madame Liu's feelings? Our madam's feelings? Oh my goodness. I have to send someone to inform the madam, eldest young miss is too young and too easily tricked. At first, Zhejun Yang was stunned at her words. Then, he was elated. The little lass finally gave her word and she also brought forward her age to sixteen. MHMM. This age is very reasonable proposal, engagement ceremony, and the exchanging of betrothal gifts and bride price between two families all of these engagement and marriage ceremonies will take quite a while, and at that time, the little lass would be nearly 18 years old. The little lass will be 13 years old after the new years, so there's only three more years until she's 16. Three years. It was a huge surprise for Zhejun Yang who had prepared himself to wait for her for five years. Although the soldiers in the army were tactless, their logic was still right. Indeed, wives had to be coaxed and pampered. In his exhilaration, Zhejun Yang could not contain his joy. He slid his arms around Zhu Xiaokao's slim waist and held her up in the air like a child. Taken by surprise, Yu Xiaokao screamed in fear, shouting to be put down while hitting him with her small fists. 